All right, so the first group of uh, topics is under this banner of uh, tables, reports, and contextual help. And um, one that I'm calling a new data management manager tool is uh, what we call our columns manager uh, platform. If you're familiar with the old columns viewer platform that's been in jump for many years, uh, this is an upgrade to that. And it makes a really nice way of kind of seeing your data without um, of course, you can you can see your data tables. That's still there, but this this is like a top level summary of the data that's in your data tables, and it gives you the flexibility to to do a lot of things for here. So, for example, if I want to see what columns have missing data, I have a column here that shows the number of missing values. If I click on it, I can I can sort uh, the the list of columns by the number of missing values, so I can see which which columns have the most number of missing values. Um, I can sort by, um, you know, modeling type if I want to, and I can come in here, for example, if I want to change the modeling type, I can change it uh, using these drop-down boxes. And if you notice, these drop-down boxes are, are, you know, spread throughout this entire platform. So it's, it makes it very flexible to change things in your data table just using this uh, interface. Just as an example here, let's say I have these columns here that all have a, a best 12 type of format. I can select all of them, for example, here. And let's say I want to change this format to something different. I can use the drop down box, change this to a fixed decimal, say with one decimal point. And if you notice, there's a checkbox here that says apply changes to all selected. I have a lot of columns here selected, so it's 33. If I do that, then if you notice, all of those columns have had the format. Uh, changed. And, you know, this used to be a little bit tedious. You have to go in and change that kind of thing on all your columns or use like a, um, a standardized attributes kind of a feature. But now this platform allows that to be done very easily. Um, we can also add things. So let's say um, this is genetic data and these are all SNPs and I want to add a note. So if I go in here and say right click and say um, add property, I can select all the properties here from the list. Uh, notes is among them. And I can say these are SNPs and um, apply changes to all 33 that are selected, for example. And now if you can see, I've got that SNP note that's been added to all my columns. So again, just a very um, quick way to, you know, kind of work with your data table and get it set up the way you need to. Um, there are ways you can launch from here as well. So I can select some columns, for example, right click, and if you notice, I can go to the dis distribution platform, make binning formulas, missing data patterns, another uh, platform available, manage limits. So if I want to see my distribution plots on those selected columns, I can get there from here as well. And another feature that I really like, I'm going to go ahead and create a brand new um, journal here because I don't want this writing to my existing journal. Um, but I can come in here and use this red triangle menu and I can create a data dictionary and say, OK. And then if you notice into my journal, I have a data dictionary. This is an object that can be minimized. And if you see, I can copy and paste this if I want to. And I could put this into another journal that I want to, or I could copy and paste this into a document. So for example, if I expand this out, and then um, now I've got the full data dictionary showing up here for all all the values, basically, you know, descriptions of all the uh, values in the table, I can copy that, for example, and then I can go to whatever I want, Excel file or Word file or PowerPoint document or whatever I want, and I can paste into there my data dictionary. I want to do it as a picture file, so I would paste special as a picture. And then, you know, here's, here's a data dictionary that can be put into your documentation. So it's a really nice way of kind of summarizing your data and have that available as part of your documenting whatever the work you are that you're working on. All right, so um, columns manager is on the columns menu. Uh, there's, but there's various ways to get there. So if you go to columns menu, there's columns manager. There's lots of ways you can bring up this columns menu. And we'll, we'll show another example here in a minute of uh, bringing up this platform. So that's the uh, new data manager uh, tool available in Jump 18. Uh, the next topic is um, similar, and this is looking at data tables and uh, pre-calculated statistics that are available now. Um, you know, we've had uh, these header graphs in uh, data tables for a while, 
But if you notice here, there's different types of graphs that are showing up here. And so if I'm looking at continuous data, if I right click, I can show a chart type and I can show the histogram, which used to be what you had. And now you can show heat maps or, or run charts. This is an example of a run chart. And this is an example of a heat map. If I have categorical data and I look at the chart types, I can do bars, the mosaic or a run chart. And, <clears throat> excuse me, the, the bars are what's shown here. Uh, this is a mosaic. And then uh, the one next to it is uh, an example of the run chart. You can actually use these objects to, uh, as a way to kind of do a little bit of navigating through your data. You can select data using these header graphs and so on. But the other thing that's new with data tables is header stats. If I click on this icon here, it expands out the header stat area. And if you notice, there's pre-calculated statistics that are in here. So you get like the mean standard deviation, the median values, uh, all showing for uh, continuous data columns. And then for categorical columns, you have um, uh, the number of categories uh, that are in the data and also the number of rows is available for either or. If you come in here and you right click and go to track selection and make sure that that's selected, now, if you notice, the statistics are going to update based on what's selected. So I can select an area, in this case, from this manufacturer. The mean of my data is 998. If I select this one, the mean is 968. So the, the stats will update based on what's selected, either using the header graphs to do that, or you can just select rows in your table or whatever method you want to do to select your data. Uh, the, the stats will update for you. Um, there's a lot of customizations that can be done here. If you go to preferences, um, you can select um, add stats here, all the categorical type of stats uh, from this, this menu. And then here's all the continuous data stats that are available that can be put into uh, your header stats area. <clears throat> so you can customize that um, however you uh, want to. I'll also show, as I mentioned, there's lots of different ways to get to the uh, columns Manager tool, this is another one. So if, when you have a data table open, you can just click on this icon here and that will bring up the columns manager platform from there. Might be an easier shortcut to remember. Okay, so that's those are pre-calculated statistics that are showing up in data tables now. But the next top topic is, I call it one-click customizations of reports. And this is a really nice feature. Um, and, um, you know, Jump is very customizable. You can take a report and you can customize it using red triangle menus and lots of features and options are available in the menus. And um, many people will customize these reports in many ways. And now those customizations can be saved as presets. And uh, some presets actually ship with Jump as standardized. So here's a normality plot view of this data. Or if I want to do a different view of the uh, data, I can select a um, compare distributions personality. And you can see my report just updates with a one-click change using these presets. So this, this button over here is your uh, preset selection uh, button. We have sample presets that ship with, with Jump that are um, you know, provided for you. You can have, actually have your own presets as well. And so, for example, if I want to uh, customize and show an ANOVA table with this kind of review, I can have my own preset for that. And um, these presets can also be organized into hierarchical structures. And just as an example, if I come in here and go to my presets for a distribution platform, if you notice, I have a group called Process Engineering and Quality Engineering. And you can imagine if you're working in an organization and they've got their preferred views of data. Um, you might be a process engineer and you've got your own views. You may work with quality engineers. And when you talk to them, they wanna see the data in a, in, a, in a format that's familiar to them. So you can also use their formats if you want to. And then you can select from a list of types of uh, presets that are available that are standardized for that particular organization. All this is possible through preferences. If you go to um, an area in preferences called platform presets, here's my hierarchical structure. And it's very easy to add um, different um, you know, folders in here and put things in folders and nested folders. Um, and then you can add your presets to the folders as you build them out. 
you can export you can act you can export as well. So for example, if I'm a process engineer and I want to share my presets with somebody else, I can hit the export button and that will save the presets to a specialized file called jump presets. And then I could take that file and email that around. And then when that person opened that file, they would automatically load all the presets that I had to find here that I sent them. So it's very easy to share these things um, within an organization. Okay, so that's um, that's this idea of uh, one-click customizations of uh, reports. Another thing that's new in Jump in 18 is that it's much easier to find samples. Um, we, we've always had an extensive sample library available, and now that's been completely revamped. It's got a GUI interface to it. It used to be you, you just got a kind of like a folder with a lot of objects in it, and it was hard to find things that you might need. Now you can look for either data or tools. And if you're looking for data, you can look at it by analysis type. So if you're looking at data, looking for a sample data that will apply for by varied analysis, you get a list. Um, you can also look at it by domain. So if you're looking for data um, that's relevant to life sciences, so here's sample data that's related to life sciences. So you can use this tool to kind of narrow down uh, data to find things that either apply to a type of analysis or a domain that you're working in. And then the tools, we have calculators, loss functions, teaching demos, and so on. So again, this is a way of kind of drilling down to find what you need instead of looking through a long list of items that are available. And then if you find something, let's just say I'm looking for something for analysis of variance, allergesic sounds interesting. Here's a preview of the table that's provided and you get to see it before you commit. And then if you say that's what I want, then you can use the open button and then it'll automatically open that sample object for you, just, just uh, using that button. Okay, so that's our new uh, sample index feature. And that is in the help menu. And if you go here, you'll see sample index. And uh, when you do that, you'll, it'll bring up this uh, platform that shows here. We also have um, improved abilities to do a deep menu search for what you might need. And, um, you know, the red triangle menus can be, I won't say complicated, but there, there can be lots of features that are in the menus. These can be buried down layers within the menu structure. We've had this uh, search feature up here uh, that would search the menu, but would only search the visible menu. Now that will search deeper down. So, for example, let's just say that you know you want to work with a Wilcoxon type of test. So you can type that in. And then you can see that there's within this platform, there's three different uh, type of Wilcoxon tests available. And you can select the one off the list that you want to use. So let's say I want to do an exact test using the Wilcoxon test method. So you can select it and I'll say continue. And there's my Wilcoxon result. And if I were to find that in the menu, it would be down into one of these submenus. So this makes it easier to find what it is you're looking for, even if it doesn't show up in the top level menu. So that's our deep menu search feature. And those are sort of the updates that are kind of for tables and reports and help. Um, I'm going to move on into the topic of process optimization, modeling, and reliability. 